Hey everybody, before I get started on this video, I just want to make it 110% clear that this is an out of left field conspiracy theory. This is just a couple of observations that I've made about things that I've noticed, and I like to get your opinion on what, what you think. But this is not something where I have clear facts, clear evidence. It's just something that uh, I, I've observed. So last year, I did this video said, titled, Samsung, Please Leave Apple Bashing to Certified Professionals. Now, in this video, I talk about an advertisement that Samsung had done. And in this video, Samsung had really bashed Apple in this commercial that they did that was very anti-iPhone. And I thought it was in very bad taste. I'm not a fan of the iPhone. I'm not a fan of Apple. But I, real, but I can still notice when a commercial is done in bad taste. So the commercial was trying to showcase the, the shortcomings of the iPhone and talk about how the Galaxy was better. And rather than focus on the things that the Galaxy does better than the iPhone, they focused on the, the places where Samsung has copied what the iPhone does poorly. So they were talking about it slowing down over time and the battery and all that and making references to the issue with the you know, battery slowing down the phone a year and a half ago. And I, I think that's kind of interesting because I had some of the original Samsung phones and the Notes and I even had the S7. You know, Samsung phones will get slow over time as well, and especially if your battery starts getting worn out. And what I also find particularly interesting is that they chose this, this vector to criticize Apple when Samsung themselves decided to copy Apple's design because they are unoriginal by sealing the battery into the phone which is what Apple did, which is what got them in trouble in the first place. People would not care if the phone was slowing down as the battery aged, if it was easy to replace it. You know, so with Apple, it's like, oh, the phone slowed down, you can't replace the battery, ah, it's sealed in. With Samsung, it is too. And I point out in this video that you have to mail the phone away, you have to wait, you have to pay about 70 bucks or so, which was about the same deal with Apple. Actually, it was less money at Apple at the time. Now, some people had criticized me at the time when I did this video and said, well, you can, at least you can buy an app, a Samsung battery with Apple. If you don't have a store nearby, you're screwed. You have to buy a knockoff battery online, and that is a mess trying to find good batteries. Or you have to find a store, and you have to mail it to Apple, and you're at their mercy. And that was a valid criticism. I cannot go to Apple.com and buy the battery part by itself, whereas with Samsung, I could. Valid criticism, point taken. However, here's where this starts to go wrong. So if you look at the site like SamsungParts.com, which is an authorized distributor for Samsung parts and uh, products, you'll notice that for the Samsung S7, which is the phone that I have, you can buy a battery. Now, you may think $44 is a ripoff. I personally don't, and I'd be happy to pay that to get an actually original battery. There are many batteries out there that are good knockoffs, that are almost as good as the original. There's also a lot of batteries out there that have a bunch of great reviews that are way worse than the original. As in, I buy it off of Amazon, it gets worse life than the original, and then three weeks later, every time the phone gets to 65%, it dies. You know, this is, this is common. I've been in this industry now for about 10 and a half years, Knockoff batteries have a wide range of quality, and it's difficult to find a vendor or a factory that's willing to give you good stuff every single time. I'm more than happy to pay $45 to buy a product for a phone that I'm sealing into the phone and to know that it is good the first time. The only reason I didn't buy from this site is because they were out of stock at the time and I was being impatient. But the point is, I'm glad that I can at least buy the battery if I want to buy it and install it myself and I don't have a store nearby. They, they provided that option until recently. Now, over the past few weeks, I've been checking this site you know, regularly just because I was thinking about replacing my uh, S7 with something else. My S7 has been through absolute hell, and since Kevin broke my Moto G and destroyed it, I don't have a spare phone, and I want to have a spare phone in case anything happens to my primary one. I use it to run a business. I use it to answer all the fresh desk tickets and live chats that Kevin ignores. I use it to you know, check inventory. I use it to listen to podcasts, keep up with the news, manage the YouTube channel, all sorts of stuff. And so I want to have one available. So I decided, you know, if I'm going to get a spare phone, I'd like to get something that is serviceable to some extent. I realized that I cannot get a user replaceable battery anymore. I realized that every company has decided that they are going to be sheep and copy Apple because Apple did something and they were successful at it. So F it, we have to copy everything they effing do. I understand that that's the way the world works now. I, I've accepted it. But at the very least, I'd like to buy from a company where if I want to purchase an original battery, I can do so. 
So I decide to go to Samsung's website and I look it up. And for some of the other models like the S8, I can, ironically, I can buy the battery connector, I can buy battery tape, but you can't buy a battery because it says no longer available. And I, for other models of the S8, you can only buy the charger. I decided to look it up for the S9. Excuse me, it's kind of getting late, so I'm yawning. For the S9, uh, no battery. I went through all three pages. I could not find a battery. If I search battery, just to show you, because some of you will think I'm making this up. I don't know how YouTube is. Can't trust nobody. You search for battery. Yeah, you got a battery connector and an IC that's no longer available. And if you search for, let's say, something for the S9 or the S10, same thing. No battery. And for the S10, you get a service manual, like an owner's manual and a service manual. So the, you can't even buy a battery connector anymore. So the parts available continue to dwindle down with each new model. And the Samsung S8 is a phone that is old enough that if you're a power user, right around now, you're, you're at the spot where your battery life is, is uh, going to be kind of shaky if you are indeed a power user. And I'm looking for other sites, and I, this site isn't even listed on Samsung's authorized reseller site. And God knows that any of the sites on this list are not going to be sites that are going to sell me a good battery, like Amazon. Or, ugh. So this, this is something that uh, it concerns me. Now, people will say you don't need to use a replaceable battery because the phone is going to make you through the day and I want to have the nice feeling back and I want it to be slim and slim and slim. And like, right, it's, I find it very interesting that right as the world is starting to get into body positivity and saying fat shaming is wrong and let models be as fat as possible and having an obese person on the cover of Sports Illustrated, that simultaneously we're fulfilling our desire for anorexia by getting thinner and thinner phones. It's, it's just funny how these things kind of like move with time like instead of focusing on anorexic humans we'll, we'll get an anorexic phone but anyway the thing is i even though i'm at a point in my life where if i wanted a one thousand dollar phone i could probably buy a one thousand dollar phone every other month and be financially fine even though i've gotten to that point i still remember what it was like to be so broke that if somebody gave me a thousand dollars i probably wouldn't sleep for four days in a row because i'd just be up working with all the new tools that i bought and all the parts that i got i'd feel like i won the lottery I remember what that's like, and I respect uh, past Lewis or 20-year-old Lewis from 10 years ago that would have killed to have $1,000. So I can't spend $1,000 on a phone that is going to last me 15 months. I can't do it. It's just, it's not an option. So if I can't buy, if I can't at the very least buy a battery to miserably pry out of my glued or taped together phone, I'm not, I'm not, not giving them money. And to people who criticized what I had said about Samsung here and in terms of them not being much better than Apple when it comes to the battery, they had a point, but I think that point is kind of starting to dwindle away. And as much as I like Samsung, I had a Samsung, <clears throat> I had the Samsung uh, Galaxy uh, uh, S4G in 2010, I had the S3, I had the S5, I had the S7. As much as I've liked the fact that they were one of the first people to put a respectable screen with good black levels and contrast into a smartphone, as much as I've liked a lot about Samsung, you know, they had a remove, they used to ha offer you more than what what they do now. It's it's you know it's, a lot of these companies again they're just slowly copying Apple. This is slowly getting closer to Apple. Like Apple glues the battery in, we glue the battery in. Apple puts a notch, we put a notch. Apple gets rid of the headphone jack, we get a headphone get rid of the headphone jack. You know, a lot of people make fun of Apple and their and the consumers of Apple for being sheep. But what I find interesting is how the same companies that the people who make fun of Apple fans uh, call sheep, those people, you know, the companies they're buying their phones from are sheep to Apple themselves because they copy Apple's design. They copy their defects. They copy the things that they do wrong. And it, it, it's just sad. And it's and I think that Samsung is going the way of doing this as well. Now, I respect companies like Motorola, even if they do certain things that are wrong or they they don't have a really a phone that fits what, what it is I want right now, because at least they will sell companies like iFixit a battery. But this And this is a trend that I'm noticing here, which is that fewer and fewer companies that sell parts openly like Samsung does are doing so. And this is happening at a time where we're supposed to accept that $1,000 is the new $600. At a time where we're supposed to accept that a phone is not going to be 
Six hundred dollars is a flagship. It's going to be a thousand or twelve hundred or fifteen hundred or two thousand with this new foldable junk. And can you imagine spending two thousand dollars on a phone and fifteen months in? Oh well, you no know, junk. I just no. I'm I'm not accepting it. I don't think you should either. But hey, it's up to you. You know, who do you want? Do Do you think that it is worth it to continue purchasing these new devices as they become more expensive, more disposable, less serviceable? Uh, or do you think it's time to say, no, F it, I'm done. Bring back the clock a little bit and I'll start giving you money. I'm moving into that latter territory where I don't want to give any of these companies money until they start to make devices where they're not giving me the middle finger every, uh, every corner. And I honestly just rather get something used. I don't I don't really spend, feel like spending more than $200 on a smartphone at this point, knowing how much effort is going into making them disposable. Uh, so what do you think? Do you think that I'm just uh, ranting while half asleep and making no sense? Do you think there's a point to this? Uh, love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you as always, and uh, I hope you learned something.